How much do you feel you really know about Minecraft? Like, really, really know? If I were to ask you what blocks have been removed from the game over the years, which ones would come to mind for you? Maybe Gears or Cogs, the predecessor to Redstone, the locked chest block for Minecraft's 2011 April Fool's joke, chairs and tables from Minecraft InDev, or for you mobile players, the nether reactor block and glowing obsidian, the usual suspects. If you didn't know about these items, be sure to check out this video that we made all about them. But what if I told you that a block that looks like this once existed within Minecraft, and there's not just one, two, or even 10 of them, but there are well over 200 broken block variations just like this that really used to exist within Minecraft. Most of them required commands to place, but still, they existed in the unmodified game. I legitimately had never heard of most of these blocks prior to making this video, and I've been playing Minecraft for nearly 11 years. So let's go ahead and let's just get right into it. Today's video is brought to you by Gamersups. Now, I'm gonna be real. This is a sponsored segment, but I legitimately enjoy Gamersups. Like, they just came out with a flavor called Guacamole Gamer Fart 9000, but it's a really enjoyable strawberry lime mixture. It's definitely one of my go-tos now, alongside Dragon Fruit Punch. Unsure if you'll like it? They offer straight up free sample packs. You just pay for shipping. Check out Gamersups via the link in the description down below. This video will be divided into two distinct primary segments because there are two main types of removed blocks that I'll be covering today, both of which are pretty wild. Now, I don't need to beat around the bush on this one because I always spoil what you're about to see in the intro of the video, but during Minecraft release 1.8's development cycle, a change was made to flower pots that removed the limitation for how many different blocks could be placed within them. Previously, the limit was 15, but now any block will work within a flower pot. Within the pot itself, any block wherein a distinct model was not specifically created, such as for cacti and in later versions bamboo, blocks will render out their bottom texture two-dimensionally, twice over, crossing each other in the middle. This is a pretty common technique in games. In some, such as another one I'm particularly skilled at, that being the Tony Hawk skateboarding series, unimportant 2D objects will instead spin around and face the player at all times. When I'm just improvising and skating around, it's almost impossible to tell that this happens, but when you look at these objects up close, it does look kind of funky. Obviously, Minecraft works a little bit differently, but the principle is largely the same, and given Minecraft's art style, it looks pretty good. And almost all of Minecraft's blocks that existed at the time could be put into a flower pot. Not only that, every single animated block retains its animation. Nether portals, lava, water, fire, you name it. These blocks existed in Minecraft for 20 weeks in early 2014, and I honestly had no idea they existed until now. Speaking of blocks that I didn't know existed, let's move on to Chapter 2. Now, if you thought that flower pots with oddly rendered blocks was crazy, this one is gonna straight blow your mind, and it's a lot more complicated than before. So, you know how each plant in Minecraft has a set amount of growth stages, and when it reaches its final stage, it's done naturally growing? Have you ever given any thought as to how Minecraft stores those values as to how far along it's grown? Well, from 2010 all the way through the middle of 2014, these block variations, or growth stages, stored how far along the plant had grown with a value that ranged from 0 through 15, meaning 16 values in total. Every single plant in Minecraft starts its growth with a value of 0, and it progressively goes up from there as the plant continues to grow. Wheat, for example, has 8 distinctive growth stages. But, 
Throughout the time period that I just mentioned, Minecraft did not prevent you from using tools or commands to place down plant blocks with data values higher than their natural maximum growth range. This led to an absolutely enormous amount of glitched block states with their visual appearance having a tendency to change from snapshot to snapshot throughout all of 2013 and well into 2014. Every single plant that existed in Minecraft at that time is affected by this glitch. Now, you might be asking how Minecraft chooses what texture to load when rendering these glitched growth states. I mean, why is a furnace growing out of the ground? What causes wheat to look like a door or a pumpkin? Why is an overeaten slice of cake rendering part of a redstone repeater's texture? Because that exists, I guess. Well, it differs from plant to plant, and the texture that appears depends on the version itself, but here's the overall gist of it. Whenever Minecraft would attempt to load an overgrown block state, the texture that loaded would usually overflow from its intended texture to the next texture on the game's internal mapping, though not always. Some notable examples are cocoa bean plants loading with the ender dragon egg texture because they exist side by side within the original texture file. Next up, wheat. Wheat is especially fascinating because each and every stage of wheat's growth pulls an entirely different texture, including the overgrown states, resulting in wheat pulling its texture from whatever texture is next within the game's texture file. In the Minecraft InDev and InfDev days, wheat with an age of 11 and 12, counting from zero, would render something interesting. These look strikingly similar to the chair and table blocks that Notch was toying around with at that time. And sure enough, those are the exact two textures that the game is loading here, since they reside four and five texture slots away from Wheat's last proper growth state. While it's been speculated that this was intentional behavior by Notch to test rendering out the chair and table, this has never been directly confirmed. Moving forward in time, throughout some of Minecraft Alpha, these were the eight overgrown wheat textures, with them changing slightly once Minecraft Beta 1.8 was released. As you might have already gathered, the reason that these textures look so funky is because they have to follow the same shape as the wheat itself, which is just a 2D image rendered four times, crossing through itself to give the imitation of 3D shape. Okay, you wanted furnaces growing out of the ground? I'm gonna give it to you. The last major item on this list is overgrown melon and pumpkin stems. While all of them yield a glitchy looking texture of some sort, the most interesting ones are when an entirely different block begins growing out of the ground under the stem. While this might seem bizarre and entirely different from before, the reason this occurs is largely the same. Whenever melon and pumpkin stems grow, they actually don't load any different texture textures as they're growing. Instead, for each and every growth state, the stem rises by two pixels and it just gets tinted based on how far along it's grown. When you use commands or tools to place overgrown stems, they have to pull their additional texture from somewhere as they continue growing, which is what results in the game pulling up an entirely different texture from the ground. Because these versions of Minecraft no longer used a single texture PNG file, and instead would stitch one together as the game loaded, called a texture atlas, the overgrown portion of the block would appear with entirely different textures depending on which stem you planted and what version was loaded, since the arrangement of the game's texture atlas would change between various different versions. In order for furnaces to appear to be growing from the ground, you'll need to load up Minecraft Snapshot 13W41A and place down an overgrown pumpkin stem with the maximum age of 15 displaying a fully grown furnace. That's a sentence I couldn't have ever imagined saying just one week ago. I have way too much fun. 
While overgrown stems that are attached to other blocks also exhibit the same growthite glitch as before, the texture-based effect isn't as pronounced. With that in mind, let's move on to the final item of this list, overeaten cake. The premise for this one is basically the same as before. In normal Minecraft, you can only see cake that has anywhere between zero and six slices bitten off from it, with the seventh bite being reserved for when you finish off the cake. But what happens when a cake has eight bites? Remember, any number from 0 to 15 is technically valid here. Well, from 8 bytes all the way through 15 bytes, this is what happens. Depending on what version you're playing on, and whether or not you're looking at the cake from above or below, things look pretty messed up here. From snapshot versions 13w41a and 14w08a, the underside of this cake appears with the diamond block and the block breaking texture. In 13w17a specifically, we get this monstrosity. Nothing makes any sense anymore. <laughs> is your brain as fried as mine is right now? Wow. But either way, that just about does it for me for now. I hope you all enjoyed, subscribe if you did, and thanks for watching.